Hello everyone, bringing you a video today looking at a recreation of a British officer serving in Oman circa 1972. This has been prompted by my talks with Jack McCabe and obviously all the kit he's sent me, not only from his British Army service but also from his service with the Sultan of Oman's armed forces. This rekindled my interest in Oman and the Defar Rebellion, which was going on, it took place before uh, Jack arrived out there, but it nevertheless prompted me to consider doing a video looking at uh, a recreation from this time period. The Defar Rebellion had been taking place since the 1960s and ran into the 1970s. Certainly in its earlier phases, it was closely linked with the unrest in South Arabia, the, the protectorates there, and Aden, which is something I talked about in previous video, the mannequin month of January of this year, in fact. The situation in Oman in the 1970s was quite interesting. Obviously, the SAS exploits out there are quite well known about and celebrated now. Uh, it's certainly a very interesting time period from the point of view of the history of the SAS. But there were also officers out there from the British Army at large who were actually on secondment and were leading units of the Sultan of Oman's armed forces. There were also sometimes referred to as contract officers, mercenaries essentially, and of course officers in a training role there as advisors basically. What we're looking at in this video is a recreation of an officer actually leading a unit of the Sultan of Oman's armed forces out in the field. And this is recreated from various photographs and footage of the time period to give something of an approximation. It's difficult because a lot of men did uh, wear different kit uh, they customised their kit to a degree, certainly uh, even at this stage in the early 1970s, obviously in the British Army as a whole, it would become more common through the late 70s and into the 80s. But certainly photographs do show quite a wide variety of ways of assembling web equipment and different items of uniform and so forth. So this is one example. It can't be taken as uh, correct for everyone who was out there, but it is one uh, example of some of the kit I've seen in period photographs and so forth. So hopefully you'll find it interesting. And without further ado, we'll get into the main part of the video and have a look at the kit. So as you can probably see from an initial study of the recreation here, there's an interesting amalgamation of available British Army uniform and equipment of the period. We'll talk about this in more detail now. The first thing to look at, of course, is the weapon carried, and this is the standard British Army rifle of the time, the L1A1 SLR, basically an imperial version of the FN FAL. Now, the FN FAL was in use with the Sultan of Oman's armed forces at this time, and some photographs do show British officers carrying them as well. So they were carrying the, the metric version, the, the original FN FAL, as opposed to the L1A1. But in some photos, it does appear the L1A1 was carried. So there's a mix of weapons there, just to make a note of that at this point in the video. In this instance, we have the L1A1 SLR. Headgear consists of a Shamag, Photographs of the time show these wrapped in various different ways. I've gone with a method which was described to me by Jack McCabe, who served with the SOAF in the 1980s. And this does match some of the photos from the 1970s as well, so it's not inappropriate for that time period. The rest of the uniform is an interesting mix of British uniform items from the time period. The shirt worn is a 1964 pattern. This is worn underneath the parachutist smock, by this point simply referred to as smock camouflage. These are very common to see with British officers serving in Oman at this time, and they were also extensively worn by men of the Sultan of Oman's armed forces. Trousers are the green drill version of the 1950 pattern, the classic British crossover belt trousers of the period. Web equipment is also a mixed bag. Looking at the front here, we have what appears to be a fairly standard 1958 pattern setup, with the two ammunition pouches around the front and a standard waist belt. Second issue ammunition pouches, we have a first issue yoke in use, and the bayonet for the SLR is carried in its usual position on the left-hand ammunition pouch. But looking at the back, we have an unusual selection of pouches. We have, first of all, looking at the right hip, a first issue 1958 pattern water bottle pouch with water bottle. This is followed by a second issue 1944 pattern ammunition pouch, essentially being used as a utility pouch in this instance. And then next along, we have a second first issue 1958 pattern water bottle pouch, again containing another water bottle. And finally, we have a water bottle carrier and water bottle from the 1944 pattern web equipment, a second issue 1944 pattern water bottle with the rubber cap, as you can see here. So plenty of water being carried, as makes sense for the very arid climate of Oman. The final thing to look at here is footwear. And in this instance, we have a standard pair of DMS ankle boots, the standard issue British boot of the time period. Quite common in Oman, but unusual elsewhere is the fact these are worn without putties or anklets, as you can see. So there we are, that's a recreation of a British Army officer serving with the Sultan of Oman's armed forces on secondment circa 1972. 
If you found that interesting, I can also recommend a video available on YouTube from Thames TV. It was a, a period uh, documentary or extended news report. And I'll put a card to that in the corner of the video here. There's some excellent reference material in there in terms of what was going on at the time, in terms of the kit and equipment that was in use, and some accounts of the chaps serving out there at the time. So I can highly recommend going and watching that. It's an excellent primary source from that point of view. If you found this interesting and you'd like to see more of this sort of thing, please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the little notification button down below. That will, of course, alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And a massive thank you, as ever, to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. Thank you all very much indeed. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, where there will, of course, be photographs from the video posted up, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. If you'd like to get in contact but you don't really use social media, there is, of course, an email address down there as well. But that's everything for this video, so until next time, bye for now.